Jimmy G. Marshall. Welcome. It's such a nice, evocative word, isn't it? Makes one think of love, of friendship, and kindness, of joyful reunions. But I'm sorry to say that our little theater doesn't usually deal with such pleasant topics. We prefer murder, mayhem, and mischief of all kinds. So that's why this story is called Welcome for a Dead Man. It's about a reunion and a man named Harry Beggs. A very special man with a very special problem. Our mystery drama, Welcome for a Dead Man was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Henry Slesser and stars Howard Da Silva. Let me show you a picture postcard. It's an idyllic country setting. The trees are tall and green, and the surrounding hills are gently curved. In the distance, you can see the turrets of some gray stone building that might be somebody's ancestral home. But if you were to come closer and recognize that structure for what it is, you would probably shudder silently and move on. Because prisons affect people that way. And this place is one of them. But for at least one of the longtime residents... This is a very important day. Come on in, Harry. Sit down, sit down. Yes, sir. Uh, didn't you hear me? I said sit down. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. There is no part of my job I like better than this. Seeing you men leave this place. Yes, sir. Especially men like you, Harry. Men who have served long sentences, stayed out of trouble, and went out clean. Uh, how long has it been, Harry? You got the record right there. Well, I'm, I'm sure you know the exact time a lot better than I do. Yes, sir, I know the exact time. 21 years, one month, three days. <laughs> I'll bet you can tell me the hour if you wanted to. Whatever you say, Ward. Oh, come on, Harry, cheer up. You don't look like a man who's facing the greatest day of his life. Now, you've got a lot of living ahead of you. Now, I, I just hope you know that. Not me. Oh, of course you do. You're only 50. 50's not old these days. Plenty of men get new starts in life at your age. It's too late for that, Warden. What? I'm a dead man. Oh, nonsense, Harry. I died in the joint ten years ago. You just forgot to bury me. I, I, I don't like that kind of talk. Yeah, but it's the truth. I'm dead. I'm a corpse. In a brand new suit... And 20 bucks in my pocket. It's just enough for a cheap coffin, maybe. I don't like that. I don't like it at all. Whatever you say, Ward. <sighs> You've got a family, haven't you? No. Oh, don't talk bull to me, my friend. Now, I've got the records right here. Just as you said, you got a wife and a child. You're wrong. Oh, all right. All right, now, I know she wasn't much on visiting. But she will be out there now waiting for you. No, nobody's waiting for me. Except maybe the elephants. The what? Nothing. Uh, you, you said something about elephants. Uh, what did you mean? Nothing, Warden. Just a little joke. Well, I've got a joke for you, Biggs. Now, you walk out of this place feeling the way you do, acting this way, and you know what's going to happen to you? No, sir. You will be right back here. And you wouldn't be the first I've said goodbye to one day and hello to the next. Now, do you understand me? Whatever you say, Warden. <sighs> oh, all right, I'll get the hell out of here. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, Beggs. One more thing. Yes, sir? If you are going to pull another robbery, steal something smaller the next time, and don't shoot anybody doing it. I'll remember that, Warden. Uh, Hello? Who, who is this? 
Uh, it's Harry, Edith. Harry? Uh, well, what do you know? What is this, that they're letting you people make phone calls now? I'm out, Edith. Out? How do you mean, out? That's it. Out of prison, paroled. Oh, you got to be kidding. I'm in a phone booth at the bus station right now. I had to break the 20 they gave me to make this call. I didn't even know if you'd be at the same number. <laughs> I'm at the same everything. Nothing ever changes for me. Harry, how could you be out serving life? I told you, parole. They reviewed my case again. They decided it was time. Not because you, you told them anything. I had nothing to tell nobody. Oh, you know what I mean. About the money. They stopped asking me about that ten years ago, Edith. If you had come to visit me, I would have told you that. I, I can't believe it. I, I never thought I'd live to see the day. The day's here, Edith. Only now what? How should I know? Somebody's got to tell me. Oh, leave us alone, Harry, all right? Go find your friends, your, your old friends. My friends are all gone. There's none of them left. Except maybe... Maybe the elephants. The what? I used to dream about the elephants every night. I used to wake up in my cell, sweating. But it's funny, you know. After a while, I stopped worrying about them. Maybe it's better that they find me and finish the whole thing. What thing? What are you talking about? Well, somebody's got to do it. You can't let a corpse walk around. It isn't decent. You've got to bury them. Harry, have you gone crazy? What's all that about a corpse? I went and died in prison, Edith. Oh, you must be crazy. I'm dead. <laughs> I'm going to hang up. No, wait. W one more thing. What is it? Edith, what if I came home? No, Harry. You, you haven't seen me in ten years. I'm I'm ten years better looking. Look, stay away from us, Harry. You hear? Don't you want to see if I lost my hair? Remember you used to say I'd look like my old man if I went bald? Well, don't you want to see? No. Oh, for heaven's sake, why didn't you stay out of my life? Why did you have to call me? I want to see you, Edith. No. You can't. You can't look at me. I don't want to see what I looked like in your eyes. Why not? Because... Because I'm an old woman now. No, not you. Yes, yes, I'm old. Older than I ought to be, thanks to you. I look older than my mother does. That's what my last ten years were about, Harry. Working like a dog. No money, just... Just getting poor and old. Let me come up, Edith, just for a while. We could talk. No, stay away from here. You understand me? You say you're a dead man? Fine. Stay dead, Harry. <laughs> Has it changed, Mac? Price of the beer has gone up, huh? Everything goes up. Inflation. Yeah, we heard about it. Even inside. Want something else? Oh, I got all I can have. Okay, pal. Just yell if you want anything. Can't buy a drink? Huh? I said, uh, can't buy you a drink? What for? Why, just for the heck of it. What else? No, I seen you sitting around there all alone, looking like you could use a friendly word, so here I am. And what's the friendly word? A drink, of course. Go on, name it. Come on. Now, what makes a guy like you want to buy somebody like me a drink? Why don't you wait until some some nice chick comes out of the joint? Hmm? I mean, if you still call them chicks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, we still call them chicks. <laughs> it's, uh... It's uh, what you said to bartender. Uh, what did I say? Well, I, I I heard you say to him about being inside. Now, look, he is a nice, clean guy, and maybe he doesn't know from that kind of talk. But maybe, you know, I know a few things. <laughs> Tell me just one. Inside means the joint. Am I right? Could be. You sitting there with that suit on? 
Look at the pieces in that suit. They're like broken cardboard. You ever wear a suit like this? Oh, <laughs> no, no, not me. The only time they had me in a slammer, I walked out two days later in my own hard chapter and marks. And that's all, huh? <laughs> you must be lucky. Uh, well, I like to think I'm smart. Okay, so you're smart. Only now I'll be smart, too, and get out of here. I'm not used to alcohol. Uh, one drink, huh? All right. One more beer. Okay. Hey, Maxie, uh, two beers, and uh, <clears throat> we'll take them over here to the table. What's wrong with the bar? The eh, table's more private. Come on. Okay, since you're buying. Uh, yeah, it's better, isn't it, huh? Well, now we can talk. Sure. Only about what? Well, let's talk about you. How long have you been on the street? This is the first day. Oh, are you kidding me? First day. Well, ain't that something, huh? Well, this really is a day to celebrate, you know? We, we ought to be having some champagne. Oh, huh? beer. <sighs> Thanks. Okay. Uh, hey, listen, I didn't get your name. Mine's Roy. My name's Harry. Well, here's good luck to you, Harry. Thanks. Sure. And here's hoping you get everything you want out of life. Oh, boy, you deserve it after all those years. I didn't say how long I was in stir. No, no, you didn't say. How long was it, Harry? How old are you, Roy? Me? 23. You were still eating baby food when I went in. No, kid. Well, that's a real shame. All those years wasted? Yeah. I bet you thought about this day a lot, huh? I used to think about it. Then I stopped. Oh, come on. Don't kid me. I bet you made plans. I mean big plans. No. Well, what about women? I bet you thought plenty about women, huh? <laughs> like I said, I was locked up only a few days, and that was all I could think about. Yeah, even that stops. Everything stops when you die. Huh? All this was said about dying? Nothing. Well, here's to you, Harry. Here's to your future. Hey, you're not drinking. I'm not thirsty anymore, I guess. Boy, if I had spent 20 years in the joint, I'd be mopping up every bar in town, eating every steak I could get my fork on. Yeah, you got a 23-year-old stomach, Roy. Ah, come on, you look in pretty good shape to me. Oh, I'll bet you mopped up a few bars in your time, huh? No, <laughs> no, just... Just one of them. There was just one place I used to hang out. Looked a lot like this one. Where was it? Over on Clinton Street, right across the way from the building where I lived. It was called Lucky's. Lucky's? No, 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 I don't know the places. Any kind of action there? It was just a neighborhood place. My wife and I used to go there a couple of nights a week. So you're married, huh? Well, why don't you say so? I'm not married. Look, Roy, hmm? I'm feeling a little woozy. Like I said, I'm... I'm not used to alcohol. Uh, hey, please, just one more minute, huh? Oh, come on, I, I want to talk to you, Harry. No, no kidding. About what, you know, about what you're going to do. Why should you care about that? Because, well, because I want to help you. What are you talking about? No, I mean it, Harry. I, I, I want to help you. Well, you look like you could use some help. I, I mean like a partner. Hey, are you stoned or something? What would I need a partner for? Oh, you know, Harry. The money, Harry. What? Get the 50 grand. Well, you're, you're going to need help getting it. You know, you know that. Good Lord. Don't look at me like that, Harry. You're an elephant. What? I never would have figured you for one of them. I've been waiting for one of you to show up, but I never figured a 23-year-old kid... What do, you, what do you mean, elephant? The ones that wouldn't forget me. Not even after 20 years. And so Harry Beggs, who calls himself a dead man, has met a man he calls an elephant. Definitely an odd couple. But what will become of their encounter... Will Harry obligingly tell the young man named Roy where to find 
They say that dead men tell no tales. Will Roy be satisfied with silence? We'll find out in just a moment when I return with Act Two. Harry Beggs is a free man. He has just put 21 years behind him and walked out into the future. But less than 24 hours later, the past has come back to haunt him. The past has taken him by the elbow, led him to a table in a dimly lit tavern, and made its grim presence only too clear. Let's not be cute about this, Harry. You're too old to be cute. I'm telling you, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about 50 big ones. The money you walked off with from the Reed Hammer job. You got the wrong guy. Okay, your name is Harry, isn't it? Harry Beggs? That's right. And then I got the right guy. Who are you working for, Roy? Me? <laughs> I'm self-employed. Ah, don't give me that. You're 23 years old. You're too young to know me. Ah, oh, you're a famous man, Harry. Yeah, you, you, you were in diapers when that Reed Hammer job was pulled. So what? I wasn't around for the American Revolution either. But I heard about it. Go away, Roy. You're starting to bother me. Oh, come on. Then that's no way to talk. I bought your beer, didn't I? I see. And now you want 50 grand in return, huh? <laughs> no, I didn't say that. You know, I, I just want to taste. Now, I wouldn't take the whole bundle. You put in a bit of time earning that money. There isn't any money. Oh, everybody knows it wasn't recovered. Now, you must have hidden it someplace, right? Well, that's what everybody says. All right, for the last time. What you heard about me, about that payroll money, is all a phony. I pulled a heist and I shot that guard and killed him. But all I got for my trouble was 21 years in a tin can. What happened to the money? I don't know. Don't give me that baloney, dead man. Now, you had it in your hand. Now, what did you do with it? I had to dump it. Where? I don't know. I just dumped it. Side of the road someplace. I couldn't tell you where. Yeah, yeah, sure. That's the story you told the cops. Now, Dick, don't keep repeating yourself. I told the cops the truth. I was in a panic. I didn't know what I was doing. Then I saw the roadblock ahead of me, and I knew I was finished. Ah, you're kidding me, Harry. I'm telling you the truth. You make it sound like the cops grabbed you ten minutes after the heist. Now, it was a good six hours before you were arrested. You really did your homework, Roy, huh? <laughs> okay. I was driving a long time. I was almost at the state border before the cops threw up that blockade, and, and then... the money, where was it? I told you. When I knew that I was going to be caught with a meat in my mouth, I did the only smart thing. I tossed it out of the car window. Oh, the hell you did. It's the truth. You buried it someplace. Everybody knows you buried it. Well, people like to think that. They like to think there's buried treasure all over the place, just waiting to be picked up by any guy with a lucky shovel. Oh, come on, you buried that money. Now, you figured you might get out of stir and come back for it one day. Oh, forget it, kid, huh? I'm telling you, the money's gone. It's gone for as long as you've been alive. The cops searched that whole road for the money bag, and so did nine million other people. Only it never turned up. I'll tell you why it never turned up. Some smart farmer boy found it and stashed it in the barn. He's been living high off it ever since. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> you're a good liar, Harry. The money's gone, kid. You think I'd be sitting in this bar drinking beer if I knew where it was? No, 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 no. You're too smart to rush it. You figured there'd be some elephants around who might be watching you, huh? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I was looking for some old elephants. Instead, I get a kid. Uh, okay, mister. You stick to your story. But uh, now, listen to my proposition, huh? What for? Now, just shut up and listen. Okay, now, let's say you did bury that money. Look, I told well, you... This I... is just, just a for instance, okay? Now, let's say you buried that money. Now, that's what the cops think. That's what Reed Hammer's insurance company thinks. And for all you know, they've been tailing you ever since you left the joint. Tailing me? What are you talking about? Oh, come on. You can't be that dumb, Harry. Now, didn't you figure they'd be watching you? No, you're wrong. Nobody's tailing me. How do you know? Because it's crazy. Because it's 21 years. The money is still good. 
All right. So what's this proposition you're talking about? It's a sweet deal for you, Harry. No, no, I mean it. It's a way for you to get your 50 grand without any trouble at all. I see. All I have to do is tell you where it is. Hey, that's right. You see, you're not so dumb. And you're not so smart if you think I'd do that. But it's the only way to go, Harry. You can't dig it up yourself. Now, even if you stay on ice for six months, you'll never be sure some fuzz isn't sticking on you. Or maybe one of your old elephant friends. You, you'll never know if you'll wind up with a shovel in your hand or a bullet in your neck. Go on. But... If you didn't pick up that bag yourself, I mean, if you didn't do the digging, but had somebody do it for you, now somebody who you could trust. Uh, meaning you, I suppose, huh? Yeah, now you got it, Harry. Look, I'll do it for you. And guess what? All I'll take for my trouble is 20%. Is that all? Yeah, 10,000. It'll be worth it to you, believe me. You won't run any risks at all. No risk, huh? What would stop you from taking the whole thing? <laughs> you just have to trust me, Harry. I got an honest face, don't I? Go away, Roy. Go away and take your cap pistol with you. I don't want to see that honest face of yours again. But you're going to see it, Harry. If you don't make a deal with me, you're going to be seeing it all the time. Now, everywhere you go and every mirror you pass. You intend to follow me around? Yeah, for as long as it takes. Sooner or later, uh, you'll have to dig it up. You'll have to. What if I get someone else to do it for me? Well, you'll still have to receive it. And I'll be there. Me and my cat pistol. Now, what do you say? Are you going to be sensible? <sighs> All right, Roy. Hey, well, now. All right. I don't want your ugly shadow following me. I got enough shadow of my own. Hey, then it's a deal? On one condition, that we make the dig together. But what if we're being tagged by one of your elephants? I'm sure they're all in that graveyard. But I won't let you dig the bag up by yourself. <laughs> Something tells me you don't trust me, Harry. That's right, Roy. I never trust anybody under 30. this place anyway. I've never been so far out of the city. It's called Purdy's Landing. <laughs> Real country stuff, huh? Hmm? I didn't know you were a country boy, Harry. When I was a kid. Is that what give you the idea? I mean, the stash. You know what out here? You talk too much, Roy. I know where the bag is, but it's 21 years ago. Someone else might know, too. Well, how do we get to this place? We get off the train, then we get a taxi. Hey. Hey, you think this old heap is going to make it to where we're going? Who's that? I said, where did you get this pile of junk? Out of a car museum? <laughs> Always gets where it wants to go. Now, uh, where was that again? I told you. The Cobbin Farm on Edge Road. Never heard of Cobbin Farm. Heard of Edge Road. But never heard of any carbon around here. Well, just take us to the road. Seems to me you got the wrong place, mister. There was a family named Carbon lived on the road about 20 years ago. Well, they must have moved then. I've been living around here about 15 years now and never heard of them. But I guess things change. Yeah, that's right. Things change. How much further? How much? Well, you said that 20 minutes ago. When we first got into these dumb woods. We'll come to the clearing soon. How do you know we're in the right place, huh? You think I could forget it? You think I could put a suitcase with 50 grand on the ground and forget where? Well, let's go then. Let's go. There. There's the embankment. I remember that. I remember I could see the top of the silo from this spot. It was painted red then. Yeah, I guess the color got worn off. Yeah, yeah, and I'm getting worn out. So come on, hurry up. Keep looking for the stone I told you about. Okay. The big black stone. If the sun was shining, you'd see it all sparkle like diamonds. Uh -huh. I don't see anything like that. I... Oh, it's here someplace. 
Even 20 years wouldn't touch that old stone. Looked like a looked like a fist coming out of the earth. Hey, 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 is that it over there? Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's the stone. <laughs> Where's the money? Three paces from it, three paces to the nearest tree. Damn. What? What is it? The tree's gone. What? The tree, I remember. It must have fallen or something. Yeah, but this is the spot. It has to be the one. What, what, what do we have to do? D dig up the whole clearing? No, no, no. We won't have to dig it all because there's the other rock, the one I put over the payroll bag. Where? Where? By that stump. That must have been the old tree. Yeah, I remember rubbing my hand on that old tree and <laughs> telling it I'd be back. I didn't know it would take me 21 years. Come on, let's go. Let's go. All we got to do is move that smaller rock, Roy. She's still there. That's where she is. Stuck. Stuck in the ground. I'll help you. Come on. Come on. Push. I'm pushing. She's coming. I think she's coming loose. There it goes. Get. Ah. Hey, it's over. You see anything? There. There's something, something over there under the leaves. It looks like canvas. Yeah, that's what it was. The bag was canvas. Hi, right? we found it. Harry, we found the money. Looks like we did. <laughs> it's here. It's just like you said. Now, look. Look, look. I can see the name on the bag. The Reed Hammer Company. That's the one, Roy. Oh. oh, my God. What is it? Oh, there's nothing in the bag. What? There's nothing in the bag. It's just leaves and dirt and rocks. There's no money. There's, there's no money. There's not a dime. Let me see. It's, it's all gone. Gone? Somebody swiped it. Somebody took all the money out. Some farmer boy. I warned you, kid. Some farmer boy searched this spot and found the money. He took oh. it all and threw away the bag. It's not fair. It's just not fair. Well, how do you think I feel, Roy? I waited 21 years for this. For this handful of dirt. <laughs> What happened to that young fella come up with you? He's not with me anymore. He decided to take the train back to the city. And you really want to go to the old country graveyard, huh? That's right. <laughs> what do you want with that place, if you don't mind my asking? I want to find something there. A uh, tombstone? That's right. Someone in your family? Someone who used to be very close to me. I see. Sort of sentimental journey. <laughs> eh? I say something funny? Uh, I was just thinking about a joke. <laughs> a very funny joke. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Beggs, the dead man, is going to pay a visit to the home of the dead. But obviously he has something more in mind than a sentimental journey. Obviously Harry Beggs is interested in the old county graveyard for reasons that have to do with the living. 50,000 reasons. I'll be back shortly with Act Three. Beggs spent almost an hour alone in the county cemetery at Purdy's Corner. His taxi driver waited patiently at the foot of the hill, gently dozing in rehearsal for the night that was rapidly approaching. And when he saw his customer again, he seemed suddenly transformed. You might almost say that the dead man had come to life. Hello? Edith? It's Harry again. Oh, for heaven's sake, what are you bothering me for? I've got to talk to you, Edith. It's important. Are you alone? Of course I'm alone. I'm always alone. Edith, listen carefully. I've got big news. I'm a rich man. What? I've got $50,000 in a paper bag. Are you crazy? I got it with me right here in this phone booth. It's got a funny smell to it. It smells like like dirt and dead leaves and maybe corpses for all I know. I swear you went crazy in that jail. I thought I died. I told you that. Only now, maybe I can come alive again. When I touch this bag full of, full of money, it makes me feel like maybe I can live. Harry, aren't you telling me the truth? I wouldn't lie to you, Edith. You see, I did hide that money just like they said I did. 
I hid it in the graveyard. Oh, Harry. I buried it where they bury people. I thought that it would be safe there, and I was right. Only at first I took it out of the bag that it was in. I hid that bag in the woods. <laughs> I'm glad I remembered where I hid the bag, too. That came in very handy. I don't want to hear about this. What? Edith, you don't understand me. Of course I understand you. From the minute we got married and... I realized you were a cheap crook. I wasn't cheap. I was just no good. But now, Edith, I've got $50,000. Don't you know what that can mean to us? We can be a family. You can move out of that dump. We can we could buy ourselves a house. A house in the country, just like we had when we were kids. Oh, leave me alone. You sound just like you did then, when we first got married 25 years ago. All those promises you made me. All about money. Nothing but money. No, no, that was a dream. This is real. You wanted money more than you wanted me, Harry. You didn't want a family, a house in the country, nothing. Just that bag full of money. Oh, you... Well, I'm glad you got it. <laughs> I hope you're very happy. No, Edith. Edith, don't hang up. Edith! <laughs> Where can I get you, mister? I'll have a beer. One beer coming up. No, no. Hmm? Wait a minute. Make a whiskey. Okay. One whiskey. How do you want it? Neat with a soda on the side. There you go. Thanks. Hey, can I ask you something? Sure. I used to know this boy. I mean, I used to live right across the street. No kidding. Yeah. What I wanted to ask you was, what ever happened to Lucky Rossiter? Rossiter? <laughs> Six feet down. No kid. Twelve years ago, his wife gave him a set of golf clubs. Goes out on the course, drops dead on the first tee. <laughs> you wonder why they called him Lucky? And what do they call you? <laughs> they call me Lucky, too. For me, I don't play golf. <laughs> Take it easy. Sorry. Sorry. <coughs> Maybe you should have stuck the beer. I'm just not used to whiskey. It's been a long time. You been sick or something? Yeah, or something. Uh, give me another one. I'll mix it with soda this time. Suit yourself. Gee, this place looks different now. Yeah, I spiffed it up. Yeah, used to be just plain. No jukebox or stuff like that. Well, you got to keep up with the times. We even got a machine here that plays electronic ping pong. How about that? Uh, that's progress, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and women. You hardly ever saw women in the old luckies. You said you came in with your wife. No, I mean women like that. <laughs> You're looking at her like you never saw any kind of woman before. Well, enjoy the drink. I got things to do. Yeah. <coughs> What's the matter, Pop? What? You got a cold or something? Oh, it's, a, it's the drink. I'm not used to this stuff anymore. Oh, well, you need practice, that's all. No, no, maybe I better just quit while I'm ahead. Oh, you can't fly on one wing. This is my second wing. <laughs> yeah, but you're still not flying, are you? Oh, why don't you have one more? No, I don't think so. I tell you what. You buy one more and try it. If you don't like it, I'll finish it for you. It's like a money-back guarantee, only you don't get your money back. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll try one more. Maybe you'd like one of your own. Oh, hey, that's a nice idea. I mean, I, I like mine with ginger ale. And uh, maybe we could have it at a table, huh? I hate these stools, don't you? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, we could do that. <laughs> Cute, you know what? Cute? Yeah. I, I love men with gray hair. And, and by the way, uh, everybody calls me honey. Hey, Mike. Uh-huh. What? Wake up. The machine. The machine is still on. It's a vacuum cleaner. Huh? Oh, I thought it was the machine shop. I must have been dreaming. Yeah, you've been dreaming for a good half hour. Only this ain't a hotel. I have to close up. What time is it? 
It's after one. Time to go home. Home? Come on. You had a good time. Now let's pack it in. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going. Where's my bag? What? The paper bag I had with me. What bag? I had... I had it with me on my lap at the bar. I took it with me to the table. Don't look at me, mister. It's gone. It's gone. I didn't see any bag. If you're accusing me... That girl I was with, the one who works here. No girl works here, fella. You got the wrong idea the kind of place I run. Please, please don't fool around. What did you do with it? Where's that girl? She called herself honey. Mister, I'll tell you this once more. I didn't see your lousy paper oh, bag. Please. And no girl works here. And if you got rolled by somebody, that's your business, not mine. No, you're lying to me. You're lying. Well, that does it. That really does it. Oh, I don't care if you're new old Lucky Rossiter. Oh, you're getting out of here, pal. Please, please. You're either getting out on your feet or on your tail. Now you take your choice. All right. All right, I'm going. <laughs> Who is it? It's me. Who? It's Harry, Edith. Oh, no. Please, please open the door, please. One second. Edith. Oh, I was afraid you'd do this. I was afraid you'd just show up. Let me come in, please. Oh, you look terrible. You look sick, Harry. I... I never would have recognized you. Can I come in? You're not even looking at me. Why don't you, Harry? Why don't you see the mess I am? Oh. All right. Come inside. Oh. So you... You didn't go bald. No, just gray. Edith, I'm in trouble. Trouble? You, a rich man like you. Something happened to the money. The cops weren't following you. Oh. Harry, you didn't let the cops know you were digging it up. No, nobody followed me. There was this one kid I told you about, but I got rid of him. I fooled him. He won't bother me again. But the money, the 50,000, it's gone. <laughs> what do you mean, gone? I got drunk. 21 years I was sober, Edith. Sober and dead. And then I go to Lucky's and I get drunk and now... Now the money's all gone. Well, how did it happen? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, Edith. I should have realized it wouldn't matter. A dead man can't spend money. Oh, please stop saying that. Stop talking that way about you, you being dead. No, but I am. And you know what killed me, Edith? It wasn't the prison. It was you. Me? When you gave up on me, ten years ago, when you decided to think of me as dead, that's when I died. Oh, Harry. You were the only thing keeping me alive. You and our kid. The thought of you. But when I knew you stopped thinking about me, that was it. Oh, don't. Don't you? You're hurting me so much, Harry. I just wanted to see you one last time, Edith, and... You know something? You don't look as bad as you said. You still look beautiful to me. Harry? Yeah? Where are you going? I don't know. Anywhere. Oh, it's late. Where will you sleep? Park bench, bus station. What does it matter? Oh, you... You could stay here. What? Oh, I couldn't turn you out without a place to go. I, I couldn't do that to a dog. You, you could... You could sleep on the couch if you wanted to. Do you want to do that? This couch? I'd rather sleep on this couch than in a palace. Oh, Harry. Harry. Edith, Edith, I missed you so much. It wasn't the money I thought about all the time in prison. Oh, hush, don't talk now. It was you, Edith. You and all the things I could do for you with that money. Oh, don't. Don't. It's, it's all right now. Everything's all right with we're together again. That's all that matters. You mean it? You mean that together? Oh. I felt dead too, Harry. Maybe together we'll... We'll be alive. Alive, Edith. <laughs> Harry. You know how old I am. 
I don't care. I'm a woman with a grown daughter. Oh, Harry, you... You never even saw your own daughter. You never saw Angela. Or she was only a baby when... Angela! Angela, wake up! She's here? In the bedroom. Angela, come out. Come out and meet somebody. What the heck's going on? What's all the yelling about? My God. What's he doing here? Just wait till you hear who he is, honey. Honey. Harry. Tell her who you are. I'm nobody, honey. Just a dead man. That's the trouble with the past. It seems to be sleeping peacefully, and then sometimes it wakes up and stares us in the face, filling the present with horror. We hope we've added a little horror to your life. I'll be back in a moment. It's been said that the past is history, but isn't it also true that the future is mystery? It's the unknown that lies ahead of us that gives life its excitement, its novelty, and its terror, which describes exactly what the future has in store for you at Mystery Theater. Excitement, novelty, and terror. We hope you'll be back for another helping of all three. Our cast included Howard Da Silva, Bryna Rayburn, Earl Hammond, and Gil Mack. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams... and beautiful music. This is KIXI, Seattle. And the time at KIXI is 11 p.m. CBS News. Talks continue in San Francisco to try to get striking policemen back to work. This is Doug Poling reporting on the CBS radio network. City officials are threatening to take drastic action if the policemen do not go back to work on Wednesday. A report from Jim Hamlin of station KCBS in San Francisco. Mayor Joseph Almiotto is seeing the two sides in a labor dispute in a downtown hotel in separate rooms and is traveling back and forth as mediator. Outside, the relative calm of that first night of the police strike has been broken by this night of increased crime activity, murder, robberies, and attacks, including an armed assault on one of the picket sign carrying police officers. A gang stole his car. Forlorn calls on the police radio for lost children and traffic accident calls go unanswered. The tires were slashed on two police cars that were left unattended momentarily. With but 10% of its manpower, the police department can respond only to life and death emergencies. Mayor Alioto is making an effort, all night if necessary, to get an agreement, but has promised to begin the court proceedings against officers and civil service firings if there is no settlement today. Jim Hamlin for CBS News, San Francisco. More news in a moment. Here's a tip from your Better Business Bureau on the metric system. You know, use of the metric system as a uniform system of measurement in this country is growing rapidly. But of course, you want to know how it will affect you, right? Well, take driving your car, for example. The kilometer will replace the mile in expressing distances. Right now, one mile is equal to 1,760 yards or... 5,280 feet. 
Now, isn't it easier to remember that one kilometer is equal to a thousand meters? Your car's speedometer will also change from miles per hour to kilometers per hour. So will speed limit signs on the highways. And again, the standard unit of measure will be the meter. And so when you order a tank full of gas, the liquid measure will be in liters, not gallons. For example, a fill-up of 16 gallons is equal to 60 liters. For more information on the metric system, write to Metric Information Office, National Bureau of Standards, Washington, D.C. President Ford is back in Vail, Colorado to resume his vacation. He interrupted it for two days for a series of appearances and speeches in several states. Much of that activity was political. During a White House conference on the economy and domestic policy held in Peoria, Illinois, Tuesday, the president issued a warning to the legislative branch. I cannot stop a runaway Congress from voting appropriations that fan the flames of inflation. But I can and I will continue to use my veto authority to curb the inflationary spending excesses of a majority of this Congress. There has to be, in fact there must be, enough good men and women in both political parties in the Congress who will band together to sustain my vetoes in the public interest. The president also warned the Soviet Union not to exploit the current crisis in Portugal. Longshoremen on the Gulf Coast are under orders from a federal judge to work Wednesday. Dock workers in Houston refused to load two freighters with grain bound for the Soviet Union. This is in line with organized labor's threat to stop the grain shipments until the U.S. government guarantees the sales will not cause big price increases for food at home. A federal judge in Texas issued a temporary order directing the dock workers back while hearings are held on a permanent injunction. The Ford administration still justifies the sales. Agriculture Secretary Earl Butts claiming such sales help the nation's economy. We exported nearly $22 billion worth of farm products last year. Agriculture was our number one earner of foreign exchange last year. This was almost enough to pay for the imported energy. We had last year about $25 billion worth. Agriculture Secretary Earl Butts. Secretary of State Kissinger leaves Wednesday night on a 10-day mission in the Middle East. Kissinger will try to nail down an interim peace settlement between Israel and Egypt. There are a number of reports saying an agreement is in the works, which could bring peace to the area for as long as three years. Reports are that Israel may have to give up more than half its current oil assets. Egypt would have to surrender its position as leader of the anti-Zionist movement in the region. Now this. When you say Budweiser, when you say Budweiser, you said a lot of things nobody else can say. When you say Budweiser, you got as far as you can go to get the very best. When you say Budweiser, you said the word that means you like to do. Anheuser Bush, St. Louis. The mysterious spy ship Glomar Explorer returns to the sea Wednesday on still another secret mission. She's to leave Redwood City, California for Catalina Island and then nine days of work, but there's no word on what it'll be doing. The vessel is the same one used to try to salvage a sunken Soviet submarine in the Pacific.